Today we're going to make a chair out of concrete. I began the design as I often do by sketching on some cardboard and then cutting it out and seeing how the general form looked. This is a great way just to figure out the basic geometry before you start cutting into real materials. I'm going to make the mold for the chair out of a sheet of 3 quarter inch thick melamine that I got from Home Depot. I clamped down a straight edge and then ripped some pieces of melamine about 14 inches wide. I cut these strips of melamine to length. I knew how long to cut the pieces because I just measured off my cardboard mock-up. Some of the angles for the chair are pretty tight, so I set the blade on my circular saw and cut a couple of the pieces with 45 degree angles on one end. I'm also going to need a base for the mold, so I cut another piece of melamine just a little bit bigger than the chair itself. Now if I made this chair solid, it would weigh about 400 pounds. So I measured in two inches from the outside edges and then cut those pieces out. These smaller inner pieces I'm going to use as the template for cutting a whole bunch of insulation foam that I had left over from the container house. This foam insulation will serve as an inner core that will reduce the weight of the chair. I placed my melamine base and then used a sharpie to trace the outline of the cardboard template onto the melamine. I then used my hot glue gun to glue down the pieces of melamine to form the perimeter. I hot glued scraps of plywood to act as braces. The 45 degree angle cuts let me get nice tight corners where the melamine was touching other melamine. Everything was working out pretty nicely, and I only had one area of the mold that had exposed particle board. But I wasn't too worried about that, I knew I could just cover that up with some silicone. Not only did I hot glue the edges of the plywood to act as braces, I also applied hot glue around all the outside edges and corners. I used silicone caulk to seal up all the inside corners and edges, and that one strip of exposed particle board. I just laid down a pretty generous bead and then used my finger to smooth it out. I used construction adhesive to glue down the pieces of foam insulation. I used a putty knife to spread out the adhesive. I didn't want too much because I am going to be ripping this all out, just enough to keep it from floating up in the concrete. I didn't realize I got to the top layer and accidentally applied a little bit of extra construction adhesive, so I just put some cellophane over that before applying some heavy weights that will hold the foam down while the construction adhesive cures. While the adhesive was curing, I cut some short pieces of 3 8 inch rebar to reinforce the chair. I wired these pieces together beforehand so that everything would be ready once I started mixing the concrete. I'm going to use about two and a half bags of Quickcrete 5000. I got a mixing tray from Home Depot and I just mixed it with a short hoe. Once I got it to the consistency of lumpy oatmeal, I started scooping it in. Now this is a pretty deep mold, so I made sure to use a stick to really push and settle the concrete down about every four inches. This just reduces the amount of air bubbles and gaps that the concrete chair will have. And so it went. I would scoop in a few inches and then use the stick to push it down, mix another bag, and then scoop in some more. I chose Quickcrete 5000 because one, it's really inexpensive. It's just about five or six dollars for an 80 pound bag, and you can get it at most big box home improvement centers. And two, because typical concrete only has a compressive strength of about 3,000 PSI, whereas Quickcrete 5000 has a compressive strength of 5,000 pounds per square inch. If you want to learn more about the concrete products that I use, go to quickcrete.com. Once I got about two inches from the top of the mold, I got the rebar and pressed it into the wet concrete. To be honest, I probably could have gotten away without using any rebar because the Quickcrete 5000 is a lot stronger than traditional concrete and every part of it is at least two inches thick. I used a putty knife just to trowel the top a little bit and get it nice and smooth. I let the concrete cure for two days and then just used a hammer to knock out the braces. I cut away the hot glue and then just peeled off the melamine. The melamine is undamaged so you could use it to make another chair. You would just have to scrape off the hot glue and wipe it down a little bit and then it would be good to go. I tilted up the chair and then started cutting and pulling out the pieces of foam. A pry bar and a box cutter came in handy for doing this and I made sure to be careful and not chip the concrete. 
Now I had to break up the foam to remove them. At first I was a little bit worried about creating all this waste, but then I realized I could use this broken up foam as a filler in a future concrete project where I needed to reduce the weight. I really like the inner texture of the chair. Because the foam wasn't cut perfectly, it gave it this nice stratified look. The chair weighs about 210 pounds, so it's not the easiest thing to move around. But the geometry suits me well, and it's no less comfortable than a wooden chair. This chair is going outside at the container house, which is great because it gets really windy there, and this is one piece of outdoor furniture you don't have to worry about getting blown away. Thanks for watching, be sure to check out some of our other concrete projects, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks! Bye!